I've got an emergency loan. Now what? <laughs> Okay guys, just like in several of my videos I've said in the past, if at any point you feel like you have a question that I haven't been able to answer, I may end up making a video for you. In this case, this is a question that I get quite often uh, via my website, www.watchbobonyoutube.com. And the question is, Bob, I don't know what to do. I got this emergency loan and I don't know what to do now. I'll give you an example right here. Look at this. This whole group of people all across the board except for Andrews, Baldwin, Chester, Digby, and Erie, they all got emergency loans this last round, unfortunately. It's actually pretty sad, but it doesn't mean that you can't get over it. It's actually something pretty simple to get over. So let me go ahead and go through what we have to do to get out of that emergency loan situation, specifically with Erie because they had the worst. I'm gonna be discussing theirs. They got their, their stock dropped down to $1 because Realistically, they're so far in debt uh, that the company thinks that they're going to go bankrupt, but they're not. And let me show you why. So I'm going to scoot on down. This is page, what page is this? Page four, uh, page three. You go down here at the bottom. This is page three of the courier report. And on this page is where you'll find your inventory. Now notice right here, Erie has $26 million in inventory. This is 26,000 with an extra three zero. Uh, as indicated somewhere on here. These are always supposed to add three more zeros. So 26 million. Well, that, that's what happened. That's why you ended up going negative. Your inventory costs. So as we scroll down and take a look, here's what we have available to us. Erie had predicted that they were going to, that they were going to sell uh, just under 2,000 parts in the low-tech, in the low-tech field. In the high tech, they had predicted about 800, or about 750. Their predictions were way off. This is what happens most of the time. When you have an emergency fund, uh, an emergency loan, it's usually because you over predicted how many parts you were going to sell. Days over predicted by 400. Cake, they over predicted by 150. Baker, the same thing. And if you remember, all of these people had emergency loans except for uh, Andrews. And I believe Feast also, or uh, Ferris also did not have an emergency loan. So because of their dramatic numbers of inventory that's left over at the end of the year, it actually costs a lot of money for the company to pay those inventory costs. So this next year, we know that you're probably not gonna sell 2,000 parts, so you don't need to produce another 1,200. You've already produced 712. So you're not gonna have to pay the material cost and the labor costs all over again. So that's that's big time savings for this next round. What will end up happening is you won't hire as many people. You'll probably lose some people in the workforce and there'll be some cost to that. But the majority of the money that you spent to get that 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 you spent and ended up getting that emergency loan on is going to be made up with this here. So you're going to want to say, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to sell at least 1,274, most likely. The age is going to go up from two years to three years. And so that means this product, EAT, is going to be like, a lot of people are going to like this because it's going to have the right age uh, for the product. It's probably right in line with the performance and size where it needs to be. The price is in line where it needs to be. So realistically, the 712 that's just sitting there is going to be sold at the $34 without having any cost taken out. So that's going to make up for the majority of that $20 million. Matter of fact, if you say $34 times 712, uh, times a thousand, you're going to end up getting that 21 million. So this team, I told them, don't worry about it. Just make sure you, you take a look at my forecast video to learn how to do that. And you'll be just fine. You'll get right back out of it. The biggest thing to keep you out of the emergency loans is this right here, properly forecasting your product, how much you're going to sell so that you don't make too many. And then the other thing is to pay attention to the price versus how much the material costs and labor costs are. That is what tells you your contribution margin. The higher the contribution margin, the more profit you're making. And if you're gonna have a high-tech product, like let's say the Expeco is going to turn into a low-tech product, you might as well turn that automation up to a 10 and your low-tech product autom automatically should get that as, as close to 10 as possible, as fast as possible. So once you've done that, you've done yourself a huge favor. You'll have lowered your labor cost, lowered your material costs, um, 
uh, lowered your labor costs dramatically, probably will not lower your material costs so much. That takes place when you start investing in TQM. So let me go ahead and scroll down real quick. That's going to happen in the later rounds, fourth or fifth round. You're going to be given the opportunity right here to invest in TQM. When you do, the another most often asked question is, how much do I put into TQM? Remember when you're going through, you have those little icons, uh, information icons. If you click on them, they will tell you uh, how much you need to put into these. So it's about 750000 for each one of these sections. So you want to borrow long term, sell stock, whatever you need to do to borrow the money to be able to put 750 on every single one of these for two rounds in a row. And the third round will probably be, uh, if I remember right, 500,000 for each one of them. And that's going to give you the, the biggest bang for your buck. Anything past that, and you're just wasting your money. It's diminishing returns after that. So if you guys have any more questions, if you want me to take a look at your at your fast track uh, or courier report, go ahead and reach out to me via my website at www.watchbobonyoutube.com and I should be able to help you out. Uh, please feel free to donate toward my website. It's what keeps the website going. Uh, I've had a lot of people that have reached out this year and, and have been very kind to, to send me a good 20 or $50 on my website and that really helps keep the website up so that I can help out uh, more students just like yourself. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, reach out to me, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.